Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to look at the centrifugal pump and we're going to look at all of its main components. And I'm going to give you a brief overview of what each of these components are doing. Later on in the course, we're going to look at each of these components in a lot more detail. So here you can see we've got a centrifugal pump. This is our cross section side. And on the opposite side, we have a view that you would normally see when the pump is installed. In other words, when you're walking around the plant, this is how the pump will look. This is its exterior appearance. Normally, a lot of these parts would be painted, so it would look slightly different to this. But let's spin around to our cross section side again so we can see all of the components. And then let's do a quick run through all of the components and then we'll go back through them and I'll give you a little bit of information about each of the components individually. So on the end of the pump, we've got what's referred to as a volute casing. That is this item all the way around here. And the volute casing is shaped a little bit like a snail. It's a very important part of the centrifugal pump and it houses the impeller. Within the volute casing is an impeller. That's this item here. The impeller has wear rings, which are located roughly here. And we've also got on the opposite side, a sealing arrangement. That is this section around here. And after the sealing arrangement, We've got some bearings. In this case, these are anti-friction bearings or more commonly called ball bearings. And we've got two of those. The pump itself is set up in a cantilever arrangement, what they refer to as an overhung pump. But let's just pause the animation for a moment and then we'll go back through those components and I can give you a bit more information about each component. So, the volute casing, as you can see, a very distinct shape, a lot like a snail. The volute casing turns the kinetic energy that's been imparted on the liquid from the impeller into pressure energy. So we're exchanging velocity for pressure. There are two different types of volute casing, and these are single volutes and double volutes. The double volute design has the advantage that the radial loads imparted on the impeller and bearings are far less compared to when using a single volute. It's also possible to use a diffuser and the diffuser's job is much the same as that of a volute. We're gonna convert some of that kinetic energy or the velocity of the fluid into pressure energy. The actual science behind this is known as Bernoulli's principle. Let's move on to our wear rings. Wear rings are used to stop leakage from the discharge side back to the suction side. Because there's a pressure difference, there's always gonna be a tendency for the discharge fluid, which is at a higher pressure, to wanna to go back to the suction side of the impeller, which is at a lower pressure. Wear rings are used to reduce the amount of leakage passing from the discharge side to the suction side of the pump. After the wear rings, we come to the impeller. The impeller consists of a series of vanes and can have either one, two or no shrouds. In the next video, I'm going to explain to you exactly how the centrifugal pump works. If you like this video, please do like it or share it on social media. It really helps me out and helps me produce even more content. If you've got any questions or comments, please do post them. I always answer comments and I'm always keen to get feedback. This video lesson is part of a video course on centrifugal pumps. If you check the video description area, you'll find a link there. And if you click on that link, it'll take you to the video course where you can purchase the course at a discount price. Thanks very much for your time.